वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्रीघनश्याम महाराजनी जय ऑल माइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड भगवान स्वामी नारायण और बिलवड गुरु जी पूज्य संत एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डेविटीज जय स्वामी नारायण On Thursday, 23rd October, we have celebrated the festival of Diwali, festival of light. In this festival, people lit the lamps outside from houses and also inside, and also eat and distribute sweets. to each other in this way people celebrate this festival kids and children also enjoy by lighting the fire crackers this is only we know some uh, we something know about the festival of diwali but what is the history behind this festival how this festival is origin for this we have to peep out into the history of india <clears throat> when lord sri ram when lord sri ram come back in ayodhya after conquering the kingdom of Ra- uh, ravan and when he got victory over the lanka then after completing after war rituals and all all other things when ram came back with lakshman ji and sita ji in ayodhya at that time the day was a uh, dark means a mass there is no moon in the sky and people loved ram but on the darkness how they welcome their lord so to welcome the lord they have lit the lamps because there was no electricity at the time in india so <clears throat> at the time uh, people lit the oil lamps both sides of the roads and uh, in the streets for lighting and uh, wel- uh, for welcoming the lord and his victorious army uh, the people fire the firecrackers and enjoy this day as a glory of the victory and welcoming their lord now some scientific reason also behind this festival why we should uh, fire the firecrackers on such day in india this season this particular time in this time in india there is no crops in the fields fields are empty and that's why the insects small insects and some birds some poisonous insects they would like to remain in the fields but as there there was nothing in the fields so they enter into the towns and cities and villages so to prevent such poisonous insects come into the houses and villages the villagers of the uh, the people of the villages and towns they fire the fire crackers on the outskirts of the village so that the poisonous insects cannot enter into the village because there is bad smells and some smoke while they lit the fire crackers and due to due to the effect of this bad smell and uh, smoke 
the insects cannot enter into the village. This is the way to prevent poisonous animals and insects enter into their homes and villages. Now for us, as we are a spiritual aspirant, we always seek to attain God realization and attain the inner peace, eternal happiness. So now for us, this festival inspire us just as we laid the oil lamp. If in the dark room, if there is no electricity, there is no any, uh, any way to enter any, any kind of light into the room, if we lit the oil lamp in the room, the room automatically, the darkness of the room, remove and we can see whatever in the room. In the same way, darkness is like ignorance or illusion which always remain in our heart. If we lead the lamp in the form of the divine knowledge, eternal knowledge of Bhagwan's divine form and the glory of his devotees, then with the help of the light of this knowledge, we can remove illusion and ignorance from our heart. This is what the inspiration from this festival for religious people. There are many kinds of ignorance remain in our heart. Such, uh, such kind of impurities just as the lust, anger, arise, infatuation, the many many kinds, greed and many other kinds of impurities which always remain in our heart. And that's why we have to remove such impurities or ignorance from our heart and to remove these impurities and uh, ignorance and illusion from our heart, we have to lead the lamp in the form of Bhagwan's knowledge as well as the knowledge of the glory of his saints and devotees. This is the only way. So now from this festival we should learn to how to lead this lamp in the form of divine knowledge of Bhagwan and his devotees glory and greatness. We have only two means. One is to read the scriptures and other thing is to have a company of uh, true and good saints. So that if we have a company of an ekantic saint, we can easily understand the glory of Bhagwan as well as his devotees. So that if we understand this glory, our ignorance from our heart can be removed. Now the other thing is that in India, this is the last day of the year. Just as here in the US and European country, we celebrated 31st December as the last day and 1st January as the first day of the year. Same thing in the Hindu calendar. There is Diwali or Diwali is the last day of the year and the next day was uh, not, and the next day is celebrated as the new year and first day of the new year. Uh, and also people wish each other as a happy new year and uh, either a happy new year or Sal Mubarak and uh, our, in our sex, a Jai Swami Narayan. In this way, uh, in India, people used to do celebrate this festival. But you should, we should consider this inspirational festival in our religious life. Just as a businessman, a wise businessman always observed and studied his accounts. At the end of the year, he always studied his accounts, whether he had loss or profit from the year. Now this is the last day for us, the day of Diwali. We should also tally or balance it whether we have got profit or loss. If we have loss, we have to do something. We have to do some calculation and we should also study in which way or in which department or in which faculty from our heart, in our religion, I have got losses. And if we have profit, then why is and wealthy businessmen always always think for more profit 
and more betterment more, more development in his business if we have got profit still we have to study our accounts and we have to do we have to plan for a new year so that we can we can do more development in our religious life as well as we can get more profit at the end of the next year our losses is what and our profit is what our profit is rajipo of the saints and his devotees if we can please the saints and devotees from the year that is our profit if we cannot please the saints and devotees that is not our loss but if we can by any way or even by mistake have committed such any work or any activity by such activity if the saints and or devotees become displeased upon us then that is our loss this is our very heavy loss so if we want to not re uh, we want to remove these faults or whatever we say from our life uh, we have to be cautious from our next year and from this very day we have to we have to do firm determination so that we cannot make the same mistake from next year this is what the history glory and scientific reason all about this festival of dipavali and new year we are talking about profit and loss from our year at the last day of the year uh, bhagwan swami narayan himself says the same thing in the vachanamru 38 kada first chapter a uh, merchant's balance sheet in this vachanamru bhagwan says bhagwan says Uh, from the time a satsang enters the satsang fellowship he should examine his mind by thinking in the first year my mind was like this then it was like this previously i had this much desire for god and this much desire for the world in this manner he should repeatedly reflect on this yearly total of desires and always strive to gradually yet constantly eradicate all worldly desires that remain in his heart, in his mind if however he does not introspect in this manner and allows those desires to accumulate and uh, then they will never be overcome consider for example the analogy of opening a, an account with a merchant this is what bhagwan says in the vachanamrut we should consider and we should observe our own self our own life we should observe and study our own life and find out what was the fault uh, of this year if we can succeed to find our faults from the year then we can try to remove the faults so first thing is to find out our faults if we cannot understand anything how to find out our faults we should observe or we should compare our own life our own behavior with the other devotees who are greater than us if we consider and if we calculate our life as uh, our life with the greater devotee then we can easily find out our bad behavior and our mistakes and our our mistakes from the from the year so in this way we can find out our faults if we find out our faults there are many faults or many mistakes we have committed throughout the year now don't be discouraged no doubt we have committed mistakes but now we have find out our mistakes we have realized that i have committed such kind of misbehavior with others 
such mi- mistakes and now from the next year whole of the year whole of the next year we have to do we have to become very cautious about our committed mistakes and we have try in such a way that we cannot perform the same mistake again this is what our our observations on our own life and if we observe these things in our own life we can get more benefit from next year we cannot easily committed the same mistake in the next year if we fixed such things in our mind and if we have not committed any mistakes but a uh, wise businessman always by studying his balance sheet his accounts he always think for more development more profit and more prosperous his business in this way in our life in our spiritual life we should also think for prosperous year prosperous religious life and how i can more engage in the form of bhagwan how i can more remember the divine form of bhagwan just as a businessman plan for the uh, make a plan for year uh, in this particular month i sell my products uh, in this much quantity and i also uh, start new branch in this city in this way we should also plan for our next year in first two years i remember bhagwan's divine form in this way i remember and keep the bhagwan's divine form in my mind even while doing this activity in this way gradually if we improve to keeping the keeping our mind focus only on the form of god then at the last day of the year next year we can get more profit more benefit more inner peace and more knowledge about the bhagwan's form in this way if we increasingly develop the technique to remember the form of god year by year day by day and if we practice constantly bhagwan had used the word constantly if we try to constantly eradicate our bad nature and constantly try to remember the divine form of bhagwan in our heart gradually and i say not the end of the year but even after the five years we can have a constant remembrance of bhagwan's divine form so our goal is to remember bhagwan's form so that one day bhagwan himself who was his divine darshan and bhagwan himself forever remain with us this is what our goal and to fulfill our goal we should read the vachanamr chapter 38 of grafus and we should understand more techniques and more things to remember the bhagwan uh by keeping the company of an ekantik sant this is the only this is the only activity for our next year so i wish all of you very very prosperous new year happy new year jay swami narayan
ಪ್ರಭುತವ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೇ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಗಣಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನಿಜ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈರಿ ಅರ್ ಬಲವೆಡ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾದ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತೋ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ our reputation is something that we really value that we really admire and that we really put close to our heart something that is so valuable to us that we have a constant focus on it i want to give you an example from that example i want to ask a question and i want you to answer it suppose First and foremost, everyone knows Bill Gates is the richest man in the world, correct? Suppose Bill Gates gives you a blank check with his signature on the bottom. And he says, you can write any figure. This is yours. You put that check in your pocket and you start walking. Suppose you're walking and you go inside of a car. After getting out of the car, you even go to the amusement park on a roller coaster. Even while after going to the roller coaster amusement park, you go back to your home and eat and then go to sleep. Your focus will be constantly where where in the wallet your pocket why you have the check is the check blank but whose signature is on that check yes now bill gates has the most money in the world so in your mind you're thinking i can write any figure right due to that your focus is constantly in your pocket even if you go on the roller coaster in the amusement park even while you're eating or you're in the car or even while you go to sleep where's your focus in your wallet in the same exact way when we are in society or when we go about society our constant focus is on our reputation how we look towards society how does society view us how do the people who i talk to every day you have a store and many many people come into that store some new right some who are daily customers who come in year around and they buy something even some who buy the same exact thing every day they come at the fixed time and they buy something and then they leave would you do anything to hurt your reputation when that customer comes in no you wouldn't say anything even like why did you come in today no you would say come please come this is my shop get whatever you want or sometimes you have a memory that you know what he wants because he's a daily customer so you take out whatever he wants and you give it to him you don't even exchange words but just by your action of taking something from the shelf what he wants and giving it to him that is your reputation that you are protecting or guarding or keeping against that person why because you don't want to lose that customer correct in the same exact way we keep our reputation even in the store i took you as an example as an adult as a teenager or a high schooler a reputation is also kept how well first and foremost there's always competition in school of being popular or being well known that is a form of reputation what does that person do well first and foremost he gets an iphone or a samsung galaxy phone what all the other kids have so he fits in 
also, not only that, but clothing similar to all the other kids. Not only that, but he talks even differently. He has a fashion. He has a way of acting towards everyone differently. He wears expensive clothes. He even joins activities where other people or other popular kids, other well-known kids around the school are in. So he also can protect and guard his what? His reputation. That's what it's all about, right? In society or anywhere. But my question to you is today, we keep a reputation in society, but when it comes to religion, when it comes to following an agna or command of Bhagwan, we tend to break our reputation in our religious life. For example, you've been going to temple and associating with saints for let's say two years now. Slowly, slowly, you start to follow the niyams or follow the vows of satsang. You start doing tilak chanlo. You also put a kantian. You also stop eating onion and garlic. Okay? Now, after some time goes by, in your school, they have a function. You're in an activity. You're in a club. And, the, and your club invites you outside to a restaurant to eat food. Now, obviously, there, you have to protect your reputation, right? Why? Because you want to stay inside that group. You want to become part of that group. You want to be well-known. Due to that, what do you do? You have the niyam, and you've been following the niyam of not eating onion and garlic. Yet, due to protecting your reputation in the restaurant, in front of your peers, you eat onion and garlic, and you break Bhagwan Swaminarayan's vo, the verse of Shikshapatri, where Bhagwan strictly and clearly says, my followers shall not eat onion or garlic. That's one example. Even moving even a little deeper, not only that, but we even forsake our puja, or we even give up some kind of association with saints because of our reputation is kind of damaged, you can say. This is a big, big loss in society. And due to that, we don't ever progress in our religious life. Just like how that person kept his reputation, just like how he protected it, just like how he had that focus on that blank check that was signed by Bill Gates and given to you, yet your constant focus was on that check. One cannot keep that same focus where when you enter into public society or, or you associate with your friends who are not religious, that you have to also abide by the niyams of Bhagwan. The reason why I'm talking to you about reputation is because it's something that is very important, not obviously only in religious life to maintain, but also to take that religious life reputation into society and keep it focused and stable. Regarding this subject, I want to give you, or I want to tell you a story about a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. First and foremost, he wasn't a devotee. His name was Hamraj Shah. He was from the village of Sundariana. Now, he was a successful businessman, and he was well known, and he was well known throughout the village. But he had this really great talent. His talent was to identify a person's illness by just taking the pulse of that person. Meaning, you know how when we go to the doctor's office, they use a stethoscope, or even they touch you on the wrist to check your pulse for your heartbeat. This person could tell the person's illness, whoever is ill, whoever is sick, by just checking his pulse. This was his talent, and this is what he did. He did it as a service. This wasn't his job. He was a businessman, but he did it as a service, kind of like uh, helping out the society. So he also had three sons, and his sons were also very supportive of this activity that he did. So 
वन डे गोपालन स्वामी भगवान स्वामीनारायण थाप मोस सेन खेम टू दिस विलेज बट ही डेंट कम ऑन एनी ओकेजन ही वॉज जस्ट ट्रैवलिंग बाय एंड ही वॉज सिक एंड वन ऑफ हिज सन सन्स इनफॉर्म्ड हिम दैट दिस स्वामी इज सिक सो प्लीज चैक हिज पल्स यू नो देर माई पी समथिंग यू कैन हेल्प हिम आउट एंड सिंस यू डू प्रोवाइड सम ह्यूमेन हेल्प यू वुड बी गुड सो हेमराज शाह डि नॉट नो दैट this saint was not an ordinary saint he was very highly spiritualized and he was the most you can say highly profiled and eminent saint of bhagwan swaminarayan at that time he didn't know anything about the religion at all but he went there and first he observed swami's body swami was lying on a bed and there after looking he he started to check his pulse what he didn't know was gopan swami was a yogi raj meaning he is a master of yoga what he can do was he can actually extract his nadis or his veins he can there is some there is a lot of things that a, a yogic master can do which i don't want to go into because i don't know everything about what that person does but it has to do with controlling the body the heartbeat doing weird things to the body okay let's just put it that way which no one else can do so gopan swami he knew that hamrat shah was here to check his pulse and he knew through his omniscient omniscient powers through his antaryami powers that that he could check pulses and identify obviously whatever illness that person had so gopan swami being smart and all uh when he When Hamraj Shah put his uh, hand on Swami's wrist to check his pulse, he extracted that pulse. So then Hamraj Shah was like, "This is the first time that uh, I've. This is the first time that I've never felt a pulse in a wrist. So maybe you know, maybe it, it's my fault. So obviously, you know, when you go to a doctor's office, they check your neck too. There's a couple of areas in the body." I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm just telling you a couple things that I know. So the wrist, that's fail. So then he goes to the neck over here, I think. Uh and no pulse there. So now he's like scratching his head because he's like, "Swami, I mean, this is weird, okay? Because he can't find his pulse." So then he goes to a couple other areas, which I don't know of, and then he's just completely baffled. He's like, I've never even seen this before where Swami is uh pulse is not even felt and I've never even met a person like this. So then Gopan Swami kind of uh awakens and uh he said what happened? Shah, you can find my pulse. And he, he's still scratching his head and so is his sons. Like there's nothing this is they they've never seen anything like this. So then Hamrat Shah, he said if you are like this if you have such powers like this then imagine how your guru is or imagine how you know the one above you is i want to meet him this is what he thought of so then gopan swami said he is in gadara right now and when you have time go ahead and meet him so after gopan swami left and then hamrat shah went to gadara for the first time to meet bhagwan swami nare there he found out that bhagwan swami narayan was a supreme lord himself and after that even without seeing any kind of miracles from bhagwan just by seeing miracles of gopan swami he was you know completely just surrendered to bhagwan's feet so he developed firm faith in bhagwan and found and realized that this is a supreme lord himself and there is no one else besides him so then before he was of the vaishnav uh you can see religion and his whole family was but and relatives everyone but after seeing gopan swami and after developing faith in bhagwan he converted his faith he converted his uh religion to the swaminarayan religion so obviously it's easy because your three sons and your wife are with you so there was no problems because they all believed in bhagwan they all went together to meet bhagwan but his relatives they did not 
at all except that how did you first you were a Vaishnav and how did you now convert to Swaminarayan there was nothing you, you met a Swami and you couldn't check his pulse so you just converted how could you do this this was from our ancestors our religion has been going on and on from our ancestors all the questions were bombarded to uh, Hamrad Shah by his you know uh, relatives you can say and yet Hamrad Shah said you know I have realized that this is a supreme lord and this is what I want to do and this is where my family stands and that's it so finally then his family or his relatives gave up a little bit and left and after a few months Hamrad Shah became sick so again those relatives came and said look you worship this god and you became sick when you were Vaishnav before you were healthy and you were perfect so just give this religion up break your Ganti or the Elekjanla wipe it off and just become a Vaishnav again so then everything will go back to normal your health will go back to normal again Amrad Shah said no I can't do that this is the Supreme Lord this was his faith so after a couple days he passed away and went to Akshardham but his three sons they remained and his three sons were very very strong just like how Hamrad Shah was strong they were also very strong and firm in the religion so you know how there is a ritual of cremation and everything that process took place and uh, they cremated the body again the relatives came to their sons now and said that your father died because he converted to this religion if you do not do the same by converting back then you will also have the same fate so break your gunties right now or the whole town will excommunicate you from the town the village and they'll throw you out and you will have no place to go obviously the sons they were young at that time there wasn't a lot of money you can say as well as they did not know how to take care of themselves or maintain themselves at that time because their father had just died so it's a balance right what do you do do you get excommunicated out of the you know town where your farmland is where your whole business is or do you convert back and you stay there and break your reputation in religion what do you do well the final outcome was that all three of his sons they had no change just like how Hamrad Shah kept firm faith in the same exact way they came fr uh, they uh, kept firm faith and they did not give up anything and they got excommunicated but when Sriji Maharaj found out about what kind of feat they did he was astonished and he actually came to the village back Sundariana and he came there and he actually had a feast there and no one said anything because of Bhagwan's you know impression at that time but the moral of this story is just like how Hamrad Shah did not give up his reputation as well as even after going to Akshardham his three sons did not give up reputation in following the firm you can say vows of religion even keeping faith in religion in the same exact way when we go to school or when we're at our store and we're selling things and the store is going really well yet yeah, our reputation should not matter if we even get a loss over a profit or even if in our school our popularity goes down that doesn't mean that we should stop following the vows of religion or we should give up but we should go ahead and encourage more and others to follow our faith to join mandir to come here or to come anywhere in some kind of religious faith and follow Bhagwan because in the end that's all matters saying this beware of keeping a reputation in society in your school in your social life and this way Bhagwan Swaminarayan will be pleased 
Sing this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Shri Patim Shri Drams Ravade Vishwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hari Madhavam Kesuam Gamdam Karanam Swami Narayanam Nilakantam Bhaje Ganshamaraj Nijay.